Welcome to my AP Scion guide. So first of all, why play Scion? Well, he's a beefy bully in the lane. He pushes fast, he ganks hard, he can take objectives easily. He beats many of the other AP mids. In fact, he was overpowered for a brief period of time, but then he got nerfed, he fell off the radar, but in fact he's still strong, and you could use his strengths to carry games and to raise your elo. Basically, if you want to AP mid like a boss, you're going to be playing Scion. Alright, so let's get into the runes. I get 10 magic penetration by taking 9 in red and 3 in blue because that plus sorcerer shoes is going to give you 30 magic penetration which is enough to reduce most of your opponent's magic resist to zero. Take flat magic resist blues for the extra survivability early game in case you're getting countered, flat ability power quintessences, and flat mana regen yellows just to make your early game that much stronger. And then for masteries, you could do 9021 when you're learning Scion for the extra sustain and starting with an extra health potion, but eventually you're going to want to move into 2109 so you're just that much more bursty. For spells, always take Ignite and Flash. You need Flash to get out of those bad situations and Ignite to add to your combo. Alright, so in this game I went 9021 for my mastery, so I started with a health potion instead of just a Doran's ring, and I prefer Doran's to boots because it allows you to be so much stronger early on. Which really is Scion's biggest weakness, I'd say, is the very, very early game. As soon as he gets some items, he could be a real threat to the enemy laner. So, against Annie or any of the squishier mages, you're going to want to be a real bully in the lane. Um, turn on your shield to absorb any harass, or to harass them if they're focusing on last hitting. And then just take as many of the last hits as you can, and it'll become really easy to farm as soon as you have a couple points in your W which is your shield. I wouldn't harass them too much with your stun because you want to save enough mana um, to always be able to use your stun and preferably your shield in case you get ganked because Scion has no real escapes other than his stun. So here I'm just doing the best I can to farm when Uter comes out of nowhere but I just stun him and walk past. Always wait to the last possible second to stun so that you have as much time as possible to get away. And then here he comes to do it again, but he's not a real threat because he doesn't have boots yet, so I could just stay on the other side of the lane and ignore him. Plus my shield would uh, absorb most of the damage that would come from a gank. So by now I have blue buff, and after every wave, see how I duck into the middle lane bush? Um, this way, the enemy mid laner doesn't know if I'm just staying in that bush between waves, or if I actually leave between waves to go and gank. And it's important to... Um, you know, create that sort of confusion. So when you do leave the gank, they'll think you're just standing in that mid bush like you always are in between lanes, and it'll take them a bit to call MIA. So if the uh, enemy aren't watching, you'll be able to uh, gank a lot more effectively. So here, Lee Sin flashes and ults. I pop everything. We get an easy kill. And then I go back since I'm sitting on 2.5k. I'm able to get triple dorns and mobility boots, so that one kill really allowed me to snowball because now I could push the lane very hard. See, I basically one shot the minion wave, so I'm going to have very high farm, and then I could just go and gank the lane. So now we just got a double kill, and the great thing about Scion after level 6 is that you could take objectives really easily. So Lee Sin starts dragon, I stop the push going on mid, and then I'm going to go ahead, head over, and help him take dragon because with your ult, you not only take dragon really fast because of the attack speed, but you heal all of your teammates um, around you. So here, Lee Sin had less than 200 health, but by the time we finish taking it, he's got over 600 just from my um, AoE lifesteal return that is part of my ult. So I'm not doing too much damage to Annie, but I took about a quarter of her health out. I am sitting on about 1800 gold, so I take blue buffs as often as possible, and... Um, yeah, your jungler hopefully will only need the first blue buff, and then after that you can get him. So here is another gank. Um, just Lee Sin and I go. I walk up through the tri bush to try to cut off their escape. We easily get one. But what I should have done is stun Udir and use my shield to kill Riven. Um, because Udir has escapes. He has Baron Turtle. He can get away. It's more important to stun him than to stun Riven. Riven wasn't going anywhere. But either way, we at least get one, and then Annie sticks around. With my shield, I'm able to tank the tower, so I make sure I'm the first one to attack her. And then between Garen's ult and me blowing up my shield and igniting her, she falls. So here I'm pushing mid. With your E on, you deal a lot of damage, and you can push turrets pretty fast. Um, Riven and Yudir both decide to come and gank me, so I stun one of them, turn on my shield. Um, so after like all their abilities are used on me, I still have about 700 health left, and luckily Tara comes out anyway to stun them off of me, so... 
um, I wasn't in much danger there because Scion has uh, such great survivability built into his shield and his stun also. And he's also very tanky because of the passive health that he's getting with each um, minion that he kills because of his E. So Annie does quite a bit of damage to Lee Sin, but I had my shield up, so at the end of the day, the only damage I took was from the two turret hits, and then I duck back into the mid bush like I do after every wave. So here I have a 175 ability power. Farming's not even a problem. I'm getting fed this game. I'm 4-0. Here are Garen's getting tower dove in, and he almost makes it out, but he stops and turns around to attack him. He should have just kept running. But whatever, I get a kill on Udyr, and then get all the last hits, and instead of running back mid, I'm just going to push this tower top, even though I wouldn't waste too much time running mid because I have mobility boots, it's better for me to just um, attack this tower, I'm dealing quite a bit of damage to it, it'll go down this minion wave, and hopefully one of my teammates can go and cover mid for me. I'll go ahead and get this tower, and then finish up by getting the rest of these minions and getting some more farm. Here I go through their jungle to gank the Soraka mid, who's pretty much one-shottable by all of us, so it's a 4v5 now, and we're going to take advantage of the situation by getting what's at this point a free Baron, because they won't be able to contest us, um, especially since one of them's dead and they're so far behind. We have lots of wards up, because Tark's been doing a great job and everyone else has been throwing down wards, and I have wards in my inventory, as always, just in case we needed them. So I use my ult, we take it easily, and then we go ahead and gank the Uter up top and finish the game. Ultimately what happened that game is that I bullied Annie out of my lane and then ganked my other lane so often that my entire team got fed, and by the time team fights rolled around we were just so far ahead that it was a pretty easy game for us. So in this game I still went 9-0-21 because I'm laning up against the Cassiopeia who's kind of counters Scion, especially early game so I needed the extra health potion. And we go ahead and invade, Graves goes and scares her off, but it doesn't matter, we wouldn't have been able to kill her anyway. Um, I have 42 AP at the start of this match because Sona's aura is giving me extra, so we have a very strong level 1 between Sona, Cho'Gath, Nocturne, Graves, and Scion. They're all actually really good um, early game characters, especially level 1 fighters. So we're going to go ahead and take their blue. And usually when I invade and get blue, I like to give it to the jungler. Um, unless I'm laning against someone who r is really difficult to lane against, like Cassiopeia or Ryze, um, I like to give it to the jungler, just because I know that I'll be able to deal with whoever I'm laning with. I don't need it, per se, early game, but I want the jungler to have every advantage he can. So here, Vayne is really aggressive and tries to mess with us more. If I had ignited her, she would have died right there, but instead, Sona goes and tries to get her, fails, then Graves blows Flash and Q to get her. It's worth it. First blood is only once a game, and... Flash will come off a cooldown. Either way, we go ahead and take blue. I actually get it. He smited it just a little bit early. He actually wanted me to get it, but it's fine. So this will make my early game um, laning against Cassiopeia that much easier. So Cassiopeia and people like her that are good at harassing melee characters when they go forward for last hits like Ryze and Karthus are annoying to deal with early game, but as soon as you get some items, you'll be able to just absorb their harass with your shield. So my best advice to you is to try to farm as best you can early game and try to keep enough mana up for a stun in case you do get ganked. And then as soon as you get some items, boots, and a couple of Dorans, you could start winning your lane again and you'll be able to farm a lot easier. What I should have done there is actually attacked the minions a bit instead of her and then I would have gotten all the last hits instead of missing a bunch of them. But either way, she took uh, a third of her health and damage and... If she wants to harass me like now, she has to blow all of her spells if she's going to get through my shield, and it's just not worth it anymore. So right here, stuff's happening down by Dragon, and I decided to go join them. Um, looks like it would be a 3v2 if they turned around, but their jungler's probably in the area. I'm looking at the map, and I see they're all missing, so we need to be pretty careful. I go ahead and drop a ward down. Hey look, Cassiopeia, she lands an ult, she lands all of her spells on me actually, and ignites me. I stun her, turn on my shield, and turn on my ult, and I'm actually beating her, and then her d poison ticks just enough to take off my shield. She hits me again. I stun her. It doesn't quite kill her. I have my Eon, and it still doesn't quite kill her, and I died at the turret because I moved too close to the turret, so several mistakes in a row. Don't get too aggressive as Scion because you do not have any you know, immediate gap closers. No way to get out of a bad situation besides Flash. 
A moment later, I return to lane, and I see that bottom lane is being pushed a lot, so even though I don't have ability boots, I make a point to shove mid lane with my shield by blowing it up and then coming down and ganking bottom lane. And they realize I'm here, and what I should have done right now is blown my shield instead of waiting until I get in the bush um, so Bux would flash away, because obviously that's what she was waiting to do, and I should have been able to anticipate that. Either way, we do get one kill, and then I go back mid to keep them from pushing the turret. She gets an ult, she uses her ignite, all her spells, trundles on me, he uses his ult. Luckily, I turn on my shield and it absorbs that last little bit of her ass, or I guess it was more than her ass, but I ended up with 58 hit points and was able to survive. So here's another um, little team fight about to happen. We're grouping up for dragon and we actually start it when we realize that they're all missing and at least four of them are down here. We assume Fiddlesticks is on his way. There he is. My only goal at the moment is going to be to get Fiddlesticks and stun him. So we do get two of them right there and my stun goes off milliseconds too late and he's able to get his ult off, but he's stuck in the middle of nowhere, so his ult was useless. Nevertheless, Sona does decide to go that way and gets herself killed, but we pick up Fiddlesticks, so we're left with three people, they're left with only two, so we actually came out of Now that I've had a chance to buy, I have mobility boots and over 100 AP, so I just wait in this bush. As soon as she crosses midway, I go and try to um, get her. I have mobility boots, she's not going to be able to get away, but lucky for her, there's a trundle near so I just decided to blow my shield right before it would have, you know, been diminished by their damage. So we get quite a bit of damage off on them. It's 3v2 it looks like, so I'm going to go back in. I'm going to pop my ults to help heal Shogath, but unfortunately he still dies, but I do manage to pick up the kill on Trundle. And then we take advantage of this uh, exchange and decide to go for Dragon because I'm Scion and I could take Dragon very easily and help my team take Dragon because of my ultimate. And then we see that there's got to be a Fiddlesticks here, so once again, I'm just trying to stun him, but I ward, I warded instead, and I wouldn't have been able to get to him, so I do the best I can, and when Cassiopeia is just sticking on me, I decide to just get out of there. Luckily, my team picks up the kill on Fiddlesticks, and I assume they're going to be able to get Vayne, so I go ahead and get a bunch of farm bottom. And then I realized that she's actually getting away, so I'm just going to go drop a stun on her and hopefully it kills her, and sure enough it does. She was smart there by auto-attacking me, because if she did get a crit, she was dead either way, but if she had gotten a crit on that auto-attack she got in at the end, I would have been dead also. So here's a team fight brewing mid. Although it looks like we get caught, it's actually a fight we want, because our Nocturne can ult in, whereas their Fiddlesticks, if you see, is stuck up top. He's not going to be able to come down for a while. The positioning here isn't too bad, they're in pretty good position, Trundle's up top trying to block our stuff, but I probably shouldn't be tanking, but unfortunately Cho'Gath is uh, a bit behind me. Either way, Sona's movement speed will make up for it, and I have all my abilities off cooldown, so my goal is going to be to nuke any of those three squishies in the back, whichever I could get to, preferably not Lux, either Cassiopeia or Vayne, and I even have my Ignite, and then hopefully Nocturne will ult in, and we'll be able to kill them before Fiddlesticks can do a thing. The only thing we need to be careful of, of course, is Cassiopeia's ult, and she does have blue buff, but luckily we um, are able to start the fight, and they decide to commit to us because Lux ults, and um, there Cassiopeia gets a nice ult, but I do stun her and ignite her, and Nocturne's quickly able to ult in and grab her, and then Trundle also, who was up front, wasn't able to escape from all RCC, so he falls too in a 2 for 0 exchange. And then we have a bit more fighting going on here. Trundle backs off when he realizes he won't be able to get Sona. Cassiopeia and Vayne are obviously in the area. So we want to be pretty careful. And we're just um, grouping up mid, grouping up for another team fight. Nocturne bot oracles, everything's looking good. I see that there's people in this bush. And I go ahead and I'm able to get a nice stun off. And too bad they popped my shield because if I had been able to blow that on them, um, let's just say a lot of damage would have been done. And I'm not with my team fighting, sure, but I was able to drive two of them out of the fight long enough for my team to pick up a kill on the remaining three. And then Fiddlesticks just hops in that bush real quick and then ults in. Um, we just finish him off. And then, yeah, the combined CC between my stun leading into a Cho'Gath knockup is just too much for them. And at this point, we're doing well. I finished 9, 2, and 7. And we were easily able to win that game. Alright, so that's it for this guide. I hope that you enjoyed it and that you learned some tips and tricks for Scion. 
Leave me a comment down below telling me what you thought about it, and subscribe if you want to stay up to date with the videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.